Deliverance Revival Tabernacle Church presents The Time Is Now with Pastor E.I. Osborne Jr. and friends reaching souls unlimited with the gospel of Jesus Christ raising up Jesus believers throughout New England the nation, Canada and the world and now our pastor E.I. Osborne Jr. Well, praise the name of Jesus, for he's worthy to be praised. I'm Pastor Osborne. I'd like to welcome you to another edition of the Time Is Now radio and television program. It's my prayer and sincere hope that God would use this program and use us right now as an instrument to minister to your needs. And I'm certain that God is going to do just that. We have a word that we're going to share with you today, and this word might not make any new friends for me at all, but we're going to say what God wants us to say. You know, God is good all the time. You know, the Bible, I believe the Bible is the word of God. And I think prophecy, well, how can you prove that? Prophecy. You know, there's so many prophecies. This book was written by so many different people at different times or whatever. It's impossible for them to have contrived it and, and, and so on. But prophecy, you know, there's not many religious books that have predictions, if you want to call it, or prophecies in them as the Bible does, because all it takes is for one of them not to happen as it should, and it discredits the whole book. Well, up to this point, and it's going to continue this way, everything that God has spoken, everything that God has said has happened exactly when, where, how, and, and so on. And anything that hasn't happened yet, because of the track record of the Word of God, we know that those things are going to happen as well, just as God said, okay? But the Bible is the Word of God. But it's interesting to me, as I was coming, getting ready, preparing to come to the studio today, I had this thought about how in some places... If I were to read certain things in the Bible, some people would call it hate speech. In some countries today, in 2024, if you went to those countries as a, or you lived there as a, as a preacher, as a man of God and so on, and you read certain things from your Bible, they would march in there and arrest you and call it hate speech. And what's interesting, what I thought, when I thought about that, what's interesting is that, that someone would think the Bible, the Word of God, is, is, is hate speech. And, and I think it, it must be because they don't understand that the Bible is the Word of God, and it's probably, in my opinion, one of the greatest love stories ever, okay? It's God's biography, but it's also one of the greatest love stories ever. It starts out with God created everything and forming and creating this man, and the man sinning, the man, after, after creating everything and giving it all to him, giving him all authority over it and so on, sins, disobeys, goes against his, what he asked him to do, sins, and, and ends up separated from him. And, and what does God do? Well, God, in his love for man, you know what he did? He came and died for him. There's a lot of people that have different religious beliefs and different, have different religions and like that, but I can't think of any who can claim that their God loved them so much he died for them. They may have a God who, who demands this and demands that and wants them to do this or that or whatever, but we can say as Christians, okay, as children of God, we can say that our God died. That is the distinction between our God and many other people's gods or whatever, is that our God, while we were, while we were listen, while we were yet sinners, not while we, in Romans chapter 5, while we were yet sinners, enemies with God, not like, oh, we deserved it and we did something to earn it and so on and, and so on. No, while the scripture says while we were yet sinners, while we were yet enemies with God, he loved us so much that he died for us. Man, that has to be, that is one of the, the greatest love stories ever. There's no hate. You know, in, in 1 John 1, 1 John 4, 1 John, I'm sorry, let me see, 1 John 4 and 8, and also in 1 John 4 and 16, it says God is love, not about love, God likes love. No, God is love, okay? And everything in this Bible is all about love. Even when God corrects, even when God says he doesn't like certain things, doesn't approve of certain things, it's still about love. Everything that God called sin, okay? If God, well, why did God call that a sin? Because he doesn't like you, he, want, he doesn't want you to have any fun, he doesn't, want, he doesn't want you to be happy. No, God called it a sin because ultimately he saw it would destroy you. Now, that may not make you too happy. That may anger you because whatever sin you're involved with, sin you're involved with, you may say, what do you mean it's going to destroy me? How is this going to, it makes me happy. Or you may just, that might make you mad right there. Well, I, I, I don't know. I, all I know is this. What I know is this. God said it's, it's going to destroy. That's why God called it sin. That's why, there's no other reason. It's not because he just didn't like it. Because it, it, ultimately, it's going to lead to destruction. 
not just destruction because he doesn't like it, but it's not gonna it's not gonna produce anything good. But now, so let me get into this, and I've already made some enemies right there. So let me just continue with that and just move and I'll keep keep going. So God is good all the time, all the time. God is good. Come on down, check us out, Deliverance Survival Tabernacle, 298 High Street, Duxbury, Massachusetts at 10 a.m. Go to our YouTube channel, E.I. Osborne, and we'd love to see you. All right, Father, thank you for this opportunity. Use it for your glory. Bless it right now in Jesus' name. Amen. I'm going to start in John chapter 9. And Jesus, and as Jesus passed by, he saw a man which was blind from his birth. And his disciples asked him, saying, Master, who did sin, this man or his parents, that he was born blind? Jesus answered, Neither had this man sinned nor his parents, but that the works of God should be made manifest in him. Jesus said, no one sinned. Now, I don't see how a man could sin before he's born and so on, but there are some ways, but I don't really want to get into that too much. But he says, he said, nobody sinned. He said, this man was born blind so that the works of God should be made manifest so that God could get glory out of his healing. All right. Not out of his blindness, but when Jesus heals him. Now, the fact that God allowed this, God didn't do it. God allowed it so that Jesus would heal him and, and, and then he'd be glorified and so on. All right. It is, uh, 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 does not mean God did it. This man was born blind because, not because God wanted Jesus to heal him one day. He was born blind because we live in a fallen world. Think about all the people who, oh, in history that you know of or even don't know of that are born, how many every day or year or whatever, that are born blind. If, if, if God was making people blind so that he could get glory in them being healed, then everyone born blind would be healed. But some people are born blind. You know what happens? They die blind. Some people are born with birth defects and all types of things. They're born with those things, and they die with those things. Do some people get healed? Yes, they do. All right? There's a man that I, that I saw on TV. His name is Nick Nukovic or Vukovic or whatever his name is, something like that. But he was born with no arms and no legs. You know, and by the grace of God, he's married. He has three children. Man, God has blessed him. But, but he was born with no arms and no legs. There are people like him that are born like that with birth defects and stuff like that. Did God do that? No. Those things happen because we live in a fallen world. Now, I don't know if anyone's ever said to him or anyone like that or someone born blind. You know, you have, you have these singers, Stevie Wonder and uh, uh, Ray Charles. Well, he went blind. He wasn't born blind. And uh, uh, Jose Feliciano and these different people, you know, who were born blind. You know, they say, well, God, God created you that way. Well, you know, they may think that, but out of their lack of knowledge. But the, but, but the reality is, no, God didn't do that. God didn't make you that way. And there are a lot of people who are being told, God made you that way. I don't know if it's to make themselves feel, feel, get a, or feel better or to justify or have a reason for why they're that way or why things are, but here's the, God didn't make you that way. We live in a fallen world. After Adam sinned, everything that God created was corrupt. <clears throat> so, and, and, and because of that corruption, okay, that's why the things that were, you know, even today, the natural disasters and floods and fires and earthquakes, it's those things, oh, that's, that's God's will. You know, first, 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 uh, first Thessalonians 5.18, in everything give thanks. This is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. You know, that verse, it, it, you have to look, really study that and look at some other translations or just take, some, take your time and read it. In everything give thanks. First of all, not for everything. Because you don't thank God for, you know, someone has a, a, a stage three cancer, stage four, it's cancer. You don't think, oh, thank God. No, you don't think. But in it, see, because by faith, you know God's going to heal you and see you through. So by faith, you thank him. But here's the, in it, not for it, but in everything, in everything, give thanks. For this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. Now, for years, and some people and still believe that, that's saying that everything that happens is God's will. And so you should give him thanks. Well, that's not the case. If, if a person gets in their car and goes flying down the highway and speeding, you know, zipping and out of traffic and like that, like you see some people do, and they have an accident and hurt someone, was the, well, did everything give thanks? This is the will of God. No, that wasn't God's will. That's the devil influencing that person because he's the thief and the murderer, all right? But it happens because we live in a fallen world, right? It wasn't God's will. So all, what that verse really is telling us is this. The will of God in Christ Jesus concerning us is that in everything we'd be able to give him thanks. Because we're supposed to have faith in God. We're supposed to have faith that he's going to make it all work together for good. We're, going to have, we're supposed to have faith that he always causes us to triumph, that he's given us the victory, and so on, right? So our faith should make us thank God in everything, knowing that God's going to fix it, bring us out, and so on. The will of God in Christ Jesus concerning us is that no matter what happens, good, bad, terrible, tragedy, whatever, we can give God thanks. That's his will, okay? Because everything that happens... Is, is in, in the world is not God's will. Now, 
in, in uh, uh, Genesis chapter 2. I'll tell you how good it was when God created up. Because see, God in Genesis chapter 1 and verse 31, I think it is, the end of the, ver end of the chapter, and God saw everything that he made, and behold, it was good. And, and the evening and the morning, it was, it was very good. God looked at everything he created and called it very good. Someone asked me after church, when we ministered this on Sunday, they said, Pastor, you know, let me ask you a question. So God created everything and called it very good, but yet Satan was there in the garden of Eden. How can God call everything good when Satan was there? Well, first of all, God saw everything that he had made, and behold, it was good. It was very good. When God looked at everything that he had made, it was very good, okay? Because that's how he made it. He made it, and it was very good. When God, okay, made the angel Lucifer, he was good. He was the anointed cherub. He was over the worship in heaven. He was the most beautiful, probably the most beautiful creature that God had ever created. He was good. Matter of fact, he was very good. Lucifer then, because iniquity was found in him, pride or whatever over his beauty or whatever it might have been, he then chose to rebel against God, and, and, and his decision caused him to be Satan the devil. People have asked me a couple of times, not many times, but why would God create the devil? Why would God? God didn't create the devil. God made Lucifer... He chose to become Satan, the devil, and so on, all right? So God looked at everything he created and said, it's good. Now, some of those good things became corrupt after the fall or because of free will, all right, became, became, became but when he created it, when he made it, it was good, okay? <clears throat> so, and I'll tell you how good it was. It was so good, and this, maybe you think this is good, maybe not, because you might like the rain and all that kind of stuff, rainy days and Mondays, I don't know right to that song. But it says here, <clears throat> Genesis 2 and verse 4, These are the generations of the heavens and of the earth when they were created, in the day that the Lord God made the earth and the heavens, and every plant of the field before it was in the earth, and every herb of the field before it grew. For the Lord God had not caused it to rain upon the earth, and there was not any man to till the ground. But there was a mist from the earth and watered the whole face of the ground. So at, up to this point, up until Noah's flood, the Noahic flood or the flood of Noah's day, there was no rain. <clears throat> no rain. Now, that also speaks to the fact that there's no rain, but there's no storms. There's no, there's no hurricanes, no tornadoes. Right now, Texas is being hit. You know, the Barbados and uh, these, some of the islands were hit with this tornado, and now Texas is being hit, the coast, Houston and all like that. <clears throat> this thing is destroying things like that. God didn't create that. That wasn't created. That came as a result of the fall. After Adam sent Everything was thrown into a state of chaos and perversion. It was perverted from what God's original intent was, all right? And so, so it was so good, though, that at that time, there was no, no rain, no nothing, until what? After the fall, and then man is rebelling against God, and so then you have Noah's flood, and you have all these different things, okay? But it wasn't God's plan. Matter of fact, if we look at Isaiah, okay, chapter 11, I'll tell you how, how good things were when God originally created them. And in Isaiah chapter 11 and verse 6, and this is just telling us how during the millennial reign, you know, how, how, how things were supposed to be and how it's going to be after Jesus returns. Because this is show, a picture of how it was before the fall. The wolf, shall, the wolf also shall, die, uh, shall dwell with the lamb, and the leopard shall lie down with the kid. The wolf dwelling with the lamb. The wolves eat lamb. Right, but no, you know this is showing us what God originally intended, and the leopard's gonna lie down with the kid, the little, you know, the kid, the little goat, leopard. He doesn't eat it; he he lies with it. And the calf, and the young lion, and the fatling, and the fatling together. All this is, and a little child shall lead them. A little child is gonna be leading a wolf, a lion, all right, uh, 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 and what was the other one? And a leopard. Isn't that something? And the cow and the bear shall feed and their young ones shall lie down together, and the lion shall eat straw. The lion is going to eat straw like an ox. The, the lion's not going to eat the ox. He's going to eat straw like an ox. Listen to this. And the suckling child shall play on the hole of the asp. An asp is an extremely venomous, poisonous snake. And the little ch suckling child is going to be feeding, right, playing around right over the hole where that poisonous snake is. And the weaned child shall put his hand on the cockatrice's den. Isn't that something? They shall not hurt nor destroy in all my holy mountain, for the earth shall be full of the knowledge of the Lord and so on. Isn't that something? That's what God, that's what God is going to bring it back to what he originally intended it to be 
before the fall. So a lot of people that believe God did this and God did that and God made you this way and God made you that way, no, a lot of things that are happening in this world and that we see in this world today are not because God did it. It's because as a result of the fall, things were corrupt, corrupt and things happen. Okay, people born with birth defects, heart disease, and all kind of things and so on. I know people who've been born with holes in their heart, you know, and, had to, and from a baby they had to have all these surgeries. Thank God they made it and they're, they're, they're healthy and so on. Adults today, but as a baby born with these different things, that wasn't God's will. That happened as a result of the fall. And people are being told, well, God made you that way. No, God didn't make you that way. God made everything perfect in his will and his, in his design. In Isaiah 65, verse 21, the Lord, the, it says, The wolf and the lamb shall feed together, and the lion shall eat straw like the bullock, and the, and the dust and so on. So it's, again, it's talking about, you know, God fixing it all and bringing it all back to us. Let me see here. Um, so, so, so when did all of these, 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 these things come into the world? Everything evil, everything negative that you see, know, consider, understand, or can think about came into the world through sin. It says here, let me see here. You know, so when I think about, like I said, the Bible, some people think the Bible is, a, is, is hate speech and hate and all that kind of stuff. But God loved us so much. This is the great love story that he died for us. When, when he could have condemned us, when he could have destroyed us and wiped us out, God, what did he do? He died for us. In Romans chapter 5 and verse 6, it says, For when we were yet without strength, when we didn't even have strength, didn't even have understanding or knowledge or strength to do certain things for ourselves, or, or, the, or the ability to, 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 to be saved, to be reconciled, to be forgiven. When we were yet without strength, didn't even know what we needed to do. In due time, what did Christ do? Christ died for the ungodly. He didn't die for the godly. He didn't die for the person that might have possibly, you know, come to the place where they deserved it or they're worthy or whatever. No, he died for the ungodly. For scarcely, scarcely, you know, just eh, maybe a little bit, you might, you know, for, for scarcely, for a righteous man, one, one, uh, will one die? You might. Eh, he's, yeah, I don't know. Does he deserve it? Is he worthy? Eh, he might, right? But it says, but yet, poor, poor, but yet, poor adventure for a good man. Some might even die. Man, he's so good. He's done so much good. Like, he might even die. But God, man, what did God do? But God commended this love toward us in that while we were yet sinners, while we were yet sinners, undeserving, unworthy, right, right, uh, uh, and so on, didn't, could, didn't, weren't, didn't deserve it, and so on. What did God do? Christ died for us. That's what he did. The Bible, the greatest, one of the greatest, the greatest love story ever. The first of the love stories, right? Greatest love story ever. That's who God is, and that's what God did. And then it tells us in Romans 5 and verse 12, Wherefore, as by one man sin entered into the world, and death by sin. Realize, it was so good when God created all we see, no consider, and understand. When God you know, spoke these things into existence, formed man from the dust of the ground, breathed into his nostrils the breath of life. Man became a living soul, a speaking spirit. Here's what, it was so good that, 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 that there was no death. God didn't create man with an expiration date or, 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 or time to die. Hebrews chapter 9, it's appointed unto man once to die. That hap that's as a result of the fall, of the sin of Adam. But before that, man was immortal. We would have lived forever. You know, even during, after, after Noah, after Adam sinned, right, even after Adam sinned, he lived to be about 900, maybe, I don't know if it was 969 years old, then Methuselah, 900 something years old, one of them 939, 169, whatever it might be. You know, uh, uh, Noah, six, 700 years, six, 600 years old, and all that kind of stuff. Because that was, you know, it even took a while for things to become corrupt enough that men begin to die, you know, and, and should be still living maybe to, to about 120 years old, okay? But what happens is because of the fall. So, so someone gets sick, someone dies, someone that they're born a certain thing. Well, oh, see, God made you that. No, God didn't make that. These things are happening in this world today, the storms, the flood. That has nothing to do with God. Don't blame God. Don't give God credit for that. They're happening in the world. They exist in the world because Adam sinned, and, the, and because of that fall, because of that sin, that's why. Wherefore, as, one, as by one man sin entered into the world, death by sin, and so death passed upon all men, for that all have sinned. Death came into the world. Sickness, disease, anything that's going to cause death came into the world through sin. Okay? That, that's, how, that's how it's here. So, let me see here. You know, when I think of even, uh, let me see here. You know, some people think, well, this is just the way I am. And, and they say, this is the way God made me. And some people, because they don't want to change, 
I'm a thief. Well, that's the way God made me. God didn't make you a thief. You chose to become a thief. It's like Satan. Satan is Satan because he chose. God created him to be Lucifer. He, 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 created, he created Lucifer. He chose to become the devil. And, it, and God didn't make you become a thief or a robber or a liar. You know, all of those things are as a result of someone's choice, all right? So you need to be saved. You need to be born again and then renew your mind, all right, and crucify your flesh. You need to be born again. What, what must I do to be saved? You got to be born again, John chapter 3, right? And then in Romans, it tells us, what do you do? You, you, you don't conform to this world, but you're transformed by what? The renewing of your mind. So your, your spirit is born again. Your mind, you have that process and that, 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 that assignment to renew your mind, right? And then your body will be, will be uh, uh, transformed or saved once Jesus returns, okay? <clears throat> you get that uh, a glorified body and all like that, and, 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 but until then, you have to crucify that flesh. All these appetites and things will be gone, all right, after Jesus returns or whatever, that resurrected body you'll have. But right now, every day, you better crucify it because the flesh is a mess, all right? Now, oh, I don't have any more time, really, but let me see here. Um, but everything, see, everything that God created, maybe I'll, maybe I'll wrap it up with this, but everything that God created, it was created for his pleasure. He created it, and he created it for his pleasure. So if he created it, he has a right to say how he wants it to function. Everything that I have, I have a, everything you have, you have a phone, you have a car, the manufacturer created it, and if you do something with it other than what he created it to, to do, it's called abuse, okay? You're perverting his plan and reason for creating that thing. It's abuse. You know, even drugs. The reason we call uh, people that use drugs and don't need drugs abuse, because that's not what they created for. A drugs might have been created for a person to, to help them overcome pain or some symptoms or some things or whatever, and then there are other people that take those drugs because they just want the feeling. They want the effects and the feeling, but they have no need for it. So what do we call that? Abuse. Anything that you take and use for something outside of the, the purpose and the plan of the manufacturer, the creator, is called abuse. You know, God created marriage, a husband and a wife, a man and a woman. God created the family, children. Re he says, uh, replenish and multiply, and, and replenish the earth and multiply. Well, God created that family unit, the man, the woman, the child. And some people, they abuse their children. That's not, that, that wasn't God's plan, the things that people do with their children, the, the things that the wife does to the husband, the husband does to the wife. That's why it's called abuse, child abuse. You know, we don't talk about husband abuse or wife abuse. We, we call it abuse, but it's abuse because that's not why, how, why it was created. If you don't know the Lord and the pardoning of your sin, and maybe you realize today, man, yo, this, so that's not God. I, I, I got to stop blaming God. I need to repent. I need to be saved, and I need to repent. I need to ask God to forgive me. Do that right now. Say this prayer with me. Dear God, I come to you in the name of Jesus. I confess that I'm a sinner, and I need to be saved. I ask you to forgive me of all of my sin. Come into my heart. Fill me with your spirit. Baptize me in your Holy Ghost with a manifestation of all the gifts and the fruit of the Spirit. Thank you for saving me. In Jesus' name, amen. If you said that prayer, hey, I got good news. You're saved. Just that easy. Saved, born again, on your way to heaven. And I tell you what, I would love to see you in time, but if I don't see you in time, i see you in eternity. So come check us out. Sunday morning, 10 a.m., Deliverance Revival Tabernacle, 298 High Street, Duxbury, Massachusetts. Now, I'll tell you what, if you live in Boston, it's only about 30 minutes away or less, depending on where you live. And if you're in Mattapan, you might be a little closer. We had a lady come the other day. I think she was from Dorchester or whatever. She came by, heard us on the radio, and so on. She knew my dad. She wanted. She came to get prayer and so on. Maybe she's listening to us right now. But come check us out. You know, we're not that far away. You know, it takes you, you know, it may be more miles, but it, it might take you, if you're in Boston or something, let's just say, if you're at Dudley Station trying to get to Mattapan Square, that ride up the, up Warren Street or Blue Hill Avenue with all the lights and traffic, in, that'd take you half an hour right there itself. So it's really not that much time. But come check us out. We'd love to have you. Jesus, let me close. Father, I pray for people sick, suffering, and afflicted. Heal them right now for your glory. In Jesus' name, amen. Jesus Christ came that you might have life, that you might have it more abundantly. So stop dying and live, live, live. Thank you for tuning in to The Time Is Now with Pastor E.I. Osborne, Jr. and friends. We pray that this message has been a blessing to you. If you would like some information on anything you heard in today's episode, or to find out how you can have a relationship with Jesus Christ, please call us at 508-746-4085. 
If you would like a copy of this message, further information about our ministry, or to make a donation, please visit our website at www.eiosborne.org or correspond by mail at the time is now. P.O. Box 3642, Plymouth, Massachusetts, 02361. On behalf of the ministry, thank you.